Happy Easter, everyone! Peter and I are having a very non-classy, uh, non-traditional Easter dinner. We have tons of our mushrooms uh, from our mushroom delivery, as well as some criminies that, uh, that we had left over, and I got all excited about meatloaf and mushroom gravy today. And today's show was just going to be about making your own gravy and making your own salad dressing, because I find that buying things like prepackaged gravy and prepackaged salad dressing are budget killers, right? You buy salad dressing, it's got one purpose. You buy oil and sugar and vinegar, it's got multiple purposes. You buy gravy powder, you use it once. I'm going to teach you how to make a roux-based gravy today, delicious sauce. I'm using super fancy mushrooms because I had them. Um, you can use crimini mushrooms, you can use white mushrooms, you can, mushrooms right here. You can use canned mushrooms in this. This is really just about building your gravy and building your sauce. I was not going to show you how to make meatloaf today because you saw me make meatballs and it's the same basic food in a different shape. However, I got up this morning all excited to make my meatloaf and realized it's Easter Sunday and we are out of eggs. So I thought I've been wanting to talk about substitutions for a long time. No time like the present. You can substitute an egg as binder in meatloaf with a number of different things. You can substitute an egg as binder in anything you're doing, including baking, with a bunch of options. They're all online. One of the top ones that they recommend is mixing up some flaxseed with some water. Uh, another great one is the water from a can of chickpeas. They're both going to do a really great job of binding. I have neither of those things. You could use peanut butter, but that's going to fight with our mushroom sauce. You could use applesauce. Again, it would be great if we were making a ketchup-based meatloaf. Not going to be great here. I'm going to use a little bit of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is mostly egg. So we're going to pop a little mayo in there. That is not one egg's worth of mayo. I'm stopping there because I'm making a super rich, creamy gravy for this, and I want to make sure that our flavor profile in our meatloaf doesn't fight with that. So in addition to the mayonnaise, I'm going to use some mustard. That's going to bind beautifully. And something that I put in meatloaf a lot anyway, the Lee and Perrin sauce that we talked about when we made our stroganoff. Put a bit of that in there and you can see that that's wetting up our meat the same way that an egg would. I'm going to finish this off with a generous flake of salt, powdered onion, because the other thing that I ran out of today was onion. Uh, a little bit of powdered onion. If you ever wondered why your mother kept that in the back of the cabinet, that'd be why. Uh, some powdered garlic. There we go. And some parsley flakes. And of course, the ever-present breadcrumb. This is going to work out really beautifully, I promise you. I am going to smush this down into my pan and be back to talk about the mushroom gravy. Salad dressing is one of the easiest things in the world to make. Uh, and people buy it all the time, and it's actually pretty expensive, and I don't know how many old bottles of salad dressing I've pulled bouldering out of my fridge before I just stopped. I make all of my dressing myself, including creamy dressings like blue cheese. But we're going to do something nice and basic today. If you have literally any kind of oil, I'm using olive oil. You can use cooking oil. It's fine. And literally any kind of vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar today, then you have salad dressing. You could mix these two things together, pour them over some nice greens, and it would be delicious. I'm going to make something a little bit more complex today. Uh, we're having a very heavy meal and a spinach salad, so I wanted to make a version of a nice sweet poppy seed dressing. This is going to be a non-creamy one. If you wanted to make creamy poppy seed dressing, you can go ahead and pop in either some sour cream or some mayonnaise. Uh, but for this one, we're going to do an emulsification. An emulsification is just when you take an agent, in this case powdered mustard, and that's going to shake up together with your vinegar and your oil, which would normally not mix together well. In this case, it's going to allow them to cohese or emulsify together. So, most recipes that you read online uh, are going to tell you to use three parts oil to one part vinegar. That's insane. That's a really fatty dressing. I usually do just under two to one. So a good glug of oil. Good hard glug of vinegar. This is something that you measure with your heart, not going to lie. You take your mustard. This is just powdered mustard. You could absolutely use canned mustard. It would make your dressing a little thicker. It would also cause it probably to come together quite a bit more quickly. That's a lot. This stuff is spicy. But we take down the spice by adding a sweetener, which in this case is going to be 
our good friend, plain old ordinary white sugar. And because I said I was making a poppy seed style dressing, we're going to throw in some poppy seeds and a little bit of salt and pepper just for seasoning. I mix all of my dressings in mason jars. Uh, you could buy a fancy dressing shaker. You could just whisk them together with a fork. I just find this really easy, and as you can see, I'm making quite a bit of it, so if there's leftovers after tonight, I just pop it in the fridge right in its own jar. So that's it, there you go. Make sure that lid is well sealed. Shake your booty. And you can see my- Can you like sing a song while you're doing it? Like you washing can. your hands or something? Oh sure, we could do a hand shake, washing shake, song. Shake, 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 shake. Shake your dressing. There you go. Shake your dressing. And that's it. All cohesive, all come together. My oil and vinegar aren't separating. It's a gorgeous color from that nice mustard and cider vinegar. Always taste. It's really nice. So when I make mushroom gravy, I actually like to saute up some mushrooms and some garlic uh, before I make the gravy and take them out of the pan. That's gonna make your mushrooms really nice and flavorful uh, and eliminate the problem of them sort of reducing down to nothing as your lovely, lovely gravy cooks. So as I mentioned, we have some criminy mushrooms there, which are exactly, by the way, the same species of mushroom uh, as a white mushroom, as a white button mushroom, which are also exactly the same species as a portobello mushroom. They're just young, immature portobello mushrooms at two different stages. White is younger, then they turn brown, then they get big. So fun mushroom facts with Jen, and let that save you a little mushroom, a little money on your mushrooms. Uh, you don't have to splash out on the brown ones. They're literally exactly the same species. When we were making our beef stroganoff, I talked to you about something called a roux. It's a wonderful thickening agent. We would use this thickening agent whether we were making a cream or milk bait sauce, a bechamel, uh, or what I'm doing in this case, which is going to be um, a beef bouillon based sauce, still going to be nice and rich and creamy. So all you do with a roux is you melt down some butter, you add some flour, again you measure this with your heart, and then you whisk. And you whisk and you whisk and you whisk until this comes together and your flour starts to cook. And yes, it is supposed to be a nice big lump like that. Maybe not quite that lumpy. Uh, so we're gonna throw in just a little bit more butter. My pan is very hot. You don't necessarily wanna use a pan quite this hot for this job, but eh, it was what we had and I didn't wanna clean another one. Whisk and whisk and whisk and whisk, all of that together, very, very nice. Well, plus you're getting all the, the leftover mushroom. I sure am, bits. Pete. So that comes together nice and smoothly. Your flour is not going to taste at all raw. And now we just add our beef stock. This is just beef bouillon and water. You got to keep up with the whisking here. That's what's going to stop it from being lumpy and bumpy. Be very gradual. Whisk it in. Turn your heat down, Jen, because it's way too hot. Just going to move this over to where we have no heat. Not a problem with thickness here, folks. I'll tell you that right now. There we go. The rest of the stock goes in. That's nice warm stock, by the way, which is helping us avoid having the lumps. If it was cold water, you'd want to add it more gradually and whisk it a bit harder. But you can see that's coming out nice and smooth. I have apparently decided to make gravy for the ages here. I still don't have quite enough liquid in this bad boy, but that's okay. My ever-present kettle always has a little bit more wealth for me. There you go. And that's a beautiful mushroom cream sauce right there. Uh, when we're ready to serve, we're gonna add those mushrooms in again. You just wanna season this with salt and pepper and anything else that you might like. And this is the faster, easier version. Okay, maybe not the faster, easier version, but the definitely cheaper version than throwing together uh, cream of mushroom soup as your gravy. Okay, it's gonna taste almost exactly the same. Enjoy. So your meatloaf is done uh, when it comes to an internal temperature of about 160 degrees. For us that took about an hour at 375 degrees. You can see that it's held together beautifully with our mustard and mayonnaise binder there. Just lovely. A couple of little crumbles. That's going to happen. I'm just doing two slices per plate because, you know, trying to be a bit modest here. Lots of leftovers for Pete and I. 
I have incorporated my mushrooms into my gravy, and I'm gonna serve this over my meatloaf with a bit of mashed potato and our gorgeous salad. So please enjoy.